um, my older brother, by three and a half years, the uh, living room tyrant of our childhood, the administerer of headlocks, the uh, thrower of darts, stealer of bikes, the beater up of his younger brother. That's my only sibling. He's the reason that I eat food like I just got out of jail. You know, you sort of like, <laughs> you hold your plate in front of you and hook your arm around it and hold your head over top of it because it can get taken from you or shit can get dumped into it. Anything could happen. Anything. So, you know, he's sort of the reason that I root for the underdog. And um, aside from finally outgrowing him at 16 and beating his ass, I, I'd really taken a lot of hard hits growing up. I guess that's what you do when you're Irish and, you know, you're boys and you're too young to drink. So, he ruined Christmas for me one year uh, by engaging in several lewd acts of various nature with his girlfriend and not doing it quietly. This was on Christmas Eve, so it, it was sort of like... A lot of kids were listening for, like, reindeer. <laughs> I was just wishing I would go deaf at that point. But we grew up, you know, I moved out, he moved out, and, and he got married. Um, but it, it doesn't seem like he's going to be able to have kids. So, and I don't have any kids, so it's sort of tougher on the holidays now. Um, you know, it's sort of a strain on his wife, but... Um, I was away for a while. Um, it wasn't prison. I was <laughs> I was working out in Lancaster, which is like prison, um, except there's there's corn stalks instead of bars. But I guess prison. I mean, I was sort of trained for that growing up, you know. But uh, so I was homesick, and and I had all these great plans. I took the whole week of Thanksgiving off. I didn't have a lot of vacation time, so I just used three days to stretch the whole week. And um, I was going to finally see my brother. I'd missed his birthday just because I was working too far from home, from his home. And uh, I was going to get to do all the late night shit that, you know, you normally can't do in Philly because you wake up and you imitate a responsible person after you're grown up. And I was going to see my friends down in Baltimore. I had these great plans. I was going to hit all this different shit all day and night. I got sick as a dog. So there I was sort of stuck at home and... And I wasn't even going to make it down to my father's place for Thanksgiving to catch up with my brother. And I was just sort of sitting there, just sort of feeling bad for myself. Yeah, great, Mike, you know, spending those vacation days on sick time. So I'm just like, yeah, whatever, I'll straighten up a little bit, do some laundry. So I'm in the basement of my apartment building. And I go down there, and my neighbor's there. His name is John Johnson. I couldn't make this shit up. He's like 85 or something like that. <laughs> He calls me Mark all the time. My name's Mike, but he fought in World War II, so he can call me what the fuck he wants. You know, like, he fought under Patton, he fought under this guy and that guy, and like he always tells me the same stories. I love old man stories. You know? So um, he's sitting there, he's bringing up a box of stuff uh, for, for Christmas, because it's Thanksgiving, he's starting to decorate. And he's just taking, he's old, he moves slow, you know, I'm surprised he didn't start on Labor Day, but um, he, he's just sort of catching a breather because he's old, you know, so he's there and I'm loading my laundry just feeling like oh, life sucks, you know, and here he is and he's, he starts telling me a story about when um, he was over in Italy or Germany in, in World War II and um, in the slot line, what the GIs would do is, is they would sort of mechanically, they'd get their food, they get to drink, all this stuff, and at the end they'd scrape their slop off in the bucket, then they'd drop off their, their plate and drop off their utensils and they'd keep going. Now the thing was, there's a lot of displaced families back then, a lot of refugees from the war. I mean, you don't think about that, you think of like, yeah, shooting the bad guys and stuff, right? Well, the GIs, they missed their families real bad and they were pissed at these Italians and Germans, they were just like, fuck these guys, you know, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't fucking be here, I'd be with my family. So they would put their coffee grinds and their food and mash it up so that the guys with little soup cans or tin cans trying to collect the slop just for something to eat, it, it would be all bitter in their mouth and kind of undigestible. But after a while, it was because they missed their family so much that they started to have sympathy for these people displaced from their homes by the same war. So after a while, they stopped grinding their coffee grinds into their food and even started setting a portion of their meal aside for these war refugees. And uh, they started to learn a little bit of broken Italian and German and started to share their stories with them and realized they had a lot more common than their differences. And um, 
I had to go. So I had to, uh, even though I was sick as a dog, I went down to, to my father's place for Thanksgiving and I spent it with my brother. I still got so much to be thankful for.